plugin should be releasing to everybody pretty soon. I believe they said they have an end goal of it happening by the end of January to get it out to everyone. This will be the first major feature that they're working on for 2024. So Rewrite 2.0, the other updates will happen after plugins get released. But before plugins could get released, they had to update everything to the credit system. So that should be happening anytime now. And this is the current plans. Now, keep in mind, as always, things could change at the last minute. But this is what they've given us to show us how things will look now. So you can see the hobby and pro plans are still pretty much the same, except everything's rolling over now to credits. The max plan is significantly less, and you're going to have two, 2 million credits, but you will also have rollover. Now, this rollover won't work the same as the word packs, which will now be called credit packs, of course. So with this monthly rollover, so let's say you only use 1.5 of your credits, you will have 12 months to use the remaining 500,000 credits. And that will continue each month. You'll have up to 12 months to use any remaining credits if you are on the max plan. If you are already on the max plan, so as of right now, you're paying, you've been paying for words at the max plan level, you are going to be grandfathered into what will be called the super max plan. It will be a legacy plan, so people will no longer be able to subscribe to it once credits roll over. I actually think maybe the deadline has passed for people to even upgrade to that. I'm not positive. But if you are already on the max plan, you will get 5 million credits per month, plus the rollover. So more than double the credits, same calls for those of you already on the max plan. So that is a glimpse of everything. To repeat what I said before in another video, if you've already paid for like a yearly plan or something like that, they will prorate everything and give you credits. So you'll get extra credits to make up for anything that you've done in advance. But today I also wanted to go over the plugins since those are going to be released soon. These are just some couple of plugins that I've made recently. I'll show you how some of these work, give you an idea of how to mess with plugins, and then I will actually walk you through creating a plugin. So hopefully this helps. I, I want to jump into one of my stories over here. And the most popular plugins are the ones that deal with the beats, since people seem to have a lot of trouble with those. So plugins do not work inside the boxes. So you can see I don't have my beats here. Instead, I just copied them from one of the chapters and I put it in the document right here. So to use the Beats plugin that I've made, which is the one just beat it, and I'm actually going to put this Google Doc link in the description so y'all can easily find all of these plugins that I did, and plus just an example of how you can use them all to really get into your story. Now, this again, this is just how my plugin works. I don't want y'all to take this to mean this is how you use all of the Beats plugins. John Creason has made some. I know go by the chapter summary, I believe, in your outline. You could also try it this way. Play around with it, see what you like. I just want to give a demonstration of how I prompted my plugins to specifically work. So I'm going to click from Just Beat It right here. So this will be your plugins tab. Scroll down. Any plugins you've created will automatically go here and any that you've added. So if you add my Just Beat It plugin, you will see it pop up in your list. I'm just going to click it now that I've highlighted everything. Expand this so y'all can see. And this was 316 words originally. Kind of want to see what it's going to do. And these were SC's generated beats. This was no editing at all. So you can imagine it does do a little bit better with editing. However, I did find I tend to do a lot of extensive editing with my beats. And it didn't add too many more words. I think the average was like 50 words it added. So if you're already one of those, extensively editing your beats, adding in all those details, really showing the AI how you want that scene to play out. I don't think you're going to get as much benefit from the beats for obvious reasons. You're already doing the work that we are prompting the plugins to do. All right, looks like it's done. Let's just see how many words it came up with. I think that was 316. This is 741 words for the beats here. And again, that was through, you could see it here. These were just SE generated beats, no editing. 
So this was began describing the setting of emphasizing its natural beauty, close knit community. This one began begin the chapter by painting a vivid picture of Thistlewood, a quaint and rustic village nestled between lush forests and rolling hills. So already you can see how much more descriptive. Whereas this one's just saying a vague, hey, go ahead, emphasize its beauty and all of that. This is actually getting specific and drawing out those details for you. Describe the picturesque cottages with their thatch roofs, cobblestone paths, warm glow of lamps flickering in windows, emphasize the strong sense of community among villagers as they go about their daily tasks, stopping to chat and sharing laughter with neighbors. So I like this. This is a great start. So if I was doing a story where I didn't have a good idea of how I wanted that scene to play out, I would definitely use this. And I could see this actually giving me some really good ideas and I could expand on it further if I wanted to. So let's check out one more. Introduce Lena. Let me read over here for introduce Lena. Spirited and determined young woman, spending time in the forest, finding solace in its strength and embrace. Here she's in her late teens, spends time in the forest that borders the wood. Described her as a determined individual with green eyes that mirror the forest, wild chestnut hair. Sure, finding strength and solace in the embrace of nature. Her sense is coming alive as she takes in the sights, sounds, and sense of her surroundings. I like the description from the first one that it drew in better, but this still isn't bad. Now, my just beat its plug in. As you see, it drew in some character descriptions in here that weren't in the SE generated beats. My plug in draws from genre, style, characters, and the outline. So, Keep in mind the same as if you would change up your character descriptions and generating your regular beats. You're still going to want to change that up because it will pull in and typically do that same thing to where it might be describing something you don't want it to describe. So check your character box if you find it's pulling things in that you don't want or just make those edits. So in this instance, the original beat didn't pull in her description. This one did. I know the AI is going to talk about her green eyes and chestnut hair. Since this is chapter one, that's actually not bad, but something you may want to change. And again, it also looks at the outline. So whereas the beats generated by Pseudorite only look at your current chapter, I created the plugin because I wanted it to view the entire outline to hopefully ensure things start flowing better. Again, and I have marked all of that in my plugin stuff. Let's close this out. Let's look at, let's do the series builder next. That's another one that people are enjoying. And then I'll show you a couple of my favorites. We will go to Brain Dot and we'll explore it real quick just so you can see. So we'll do the three build, uh, three book series builder for each Brain Dot genre and characters. You would think I'd had of all these memorized, and I think I do, but I always doubt myself. Now, the creator of the plugin decides which boxes it pulls from for that plugin, for that information. But theoretically, you could leave those boxes empty and just do a highlighted version. So I have things filled out. That's what I'm going to use. But ideally, I could also just type stuff into the document, highlight that information, and then use the plugin. I'm going to grab the three book series. Now, after extensively testing this, I can say they work 98, 99% of the time. Every once in a while, for whatever reason, the same as when we're working with ChatGPT or Playground, Thought, all of those. Every once in a while, it doesn't quite give me the format the way that I want it to do it. You know, if I was doing my eight book plug-in, you know, where it does the eight book series, occasionally it'll say books five through seven follow the same format. I have prompted it to try to counteract that so it happens less, but just keep that in mind. Please don't get angry at me if it does happen to do that for you. It's out of my control at this hands. I've done extensive prompting. I've tested it extensively. They mostly work, but occasionally you will have that incorrect format where it's summarizing. So you can see here it gave us our series outline, the series name. Overall series arc with the theme, conflict resolution, the pacing of the early, middle, and final books, 
and then a book by book outline for all three. And all three will have the plot, character arcs, pacing, conflict resolution, contribution to the series arc. And then we have some additional information down here to help you, including some subplots right here. So I'm really happy with how this one came out. Again, just keep in mind, occasionally the format does come out wrong where it tries to just group up some books whenever you're getting into the later like eight book type series again that is that one one of my favorites is actually the snowflake method one i'm going to show you that and i'd like to show you how let me check my synopsis box make sure it's a simple one here yep okay so you'll see i have a very simple 302 word synopsis I'm just reading through real quick. This is one we did in our four-day series. I'm going to do the detailed snowflake one and then show you what I have been doing once I have this. So ideally, I'm using this pretty early on. Again, I gave you all an example of how I would likely use these, the order I would use them. Like given us our character description, the minor characters, the settings and locations. And this is exactly what I mean about sometimes it's out of my hands and the LLM just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to try this one more time because it should be giving us more information. And keep in mind too, as you're seeing here with it not working, this also happens when the LLMs update things and when pseudo-write updates things, our prompting may need to be reworded. It no longer works as it originally did. Now it does the scene by scene outline like it's supposed to. And again, going through the other stuff that we saw. And you can see here what I'm talking about, look at the formatting for this versus look at the formatting of the original. This is what it's supposed to give you right here. Welcome to the world of AI. So what I am going to do is copy portions of both of these, and it actually should give you even more. It should do the one sentence summary, the paragraph, plus the full synopsis. So I'm just going to take this to give you an example of what I actually do with it. So I'm going to copy the scene by scenes, and I'm going to actually put all of that in my brain top. And then I'm going to copy the character and all of this information. So I put all of that in my brain top. As you can see, I still have room to spare. That was only 688 words. And then I like to generate my synopsis once I have all of that information inside the brain dump. And I find doing it this way really gives me a very nice, thick, very specific, detailed synopsis. So I'm liking this a lot better. Of course, you would still need to do any editing to make sure it's the way you want the story told. All right, let's look at some more of these. We can brainstorm some ideas real quick. And I will show you the character arc one. I would like to show you the erotic scenes, but that one just, it really does get extreme. People who have been in my dark and taboo classes know I don't get shocked easily. It actually shocked me the other day with what it did. But we'll look at a couple of these. I love the villain creator and the novel twister. If you really wanted to try something to take your story up a notch, you don't know. What little twist you could add, I'd say check out the novel Twister. That'd give you some ideas. The villain creator does a really good job of giving you a an antagonist that has some depth, you know, meaning behind why they're doing what they're doing. It gives you their backstory and all of that. We're just going to look at the three-act character arc real quick. And in another video, I will actually show the NSFW one. All right, so I am just going to click because I know it's prompting for my boxes already. Let me click to do that. And I have the three act, four act, and five act version. It just gives you, you know, a little description of what's going on and the emotional change for each act. Just to kind of help you. And this is something you could start incorporating into your character box and even maybe your chapter summary or the beats with a little summarization there. So that is the character arc plugin. I'm not going to go through all of the plugins because there's so many. Play around with it. If you're in the Pseudorite Discord, you can always reach out to me. My name is the same on there, Nicole Brusor. So you can always reach out to me if you have any questions on any of these plugins. One I did have fun with, let me show you just a more fun one, was the novel playlist. So 
I'm a huge bookworm. I just, when I had the time, I'm reading about a book a day. And I used to love it when the romance writers would put a Spotify playlist in their books for me to listen to. And I even noticed that the Twisted Sister authors would do it occasionally for their series. I love that. And I hate that authors aren't doing that as much anymore. So any authors that are thinking about it, please give me the playlist. I like it. But this is a just for fun one. It looks at your story information. It pulls from all of the boxes just to try to really get that idea of your story and gives you some ideas for songs you could use. Not bad. And rounding it out with Eye of the Tiger. We covered a couple of these. One of my other favorites is the brainstorm story ideas. So let's look at that. Let's do, I want to see what it gives us from here. Sorry, out of habit, I keep expanding that and then having to redo this. I don't know why. I'm not liking this. This isn't the way I intended this plugin to be used. But again, I want to show you the differences. So I am going to go to a different story. I am going to say, here we go. As you can see, I'm going to scroll down. All of my boxes are empty right here. This was what I was working on during my testing. So I'm going to tell it one epic fantasy with dwarves, elves, humans, mythical creatures. That's what I need. Mythical creatures, elements, and battles between the races. The greater evil of the races must join together to defeat. And let's have it. I'll go ahead and put this in the genre box. And see, sword and sorcery, and of course, whatever other elements you wanted. And I could also just put this inside brain up. No big deal. I'm going to highlight that. And let's like some brainstorm. Some story ideas. Not bad. Millennium Lunar Eclipse. I'm not crazy about those. I do kind of like this one. Cataclysmic event has shattered the realm into floating islands, each inhabited by one of the races. They must band together to defeat an invading army from another world. Reminds me a, of World of Warcraft. Four pillars. So there's some story ideas. So this ideally would be the first step. Me letting it know what kind of genre I wanted to create. Giving a little information on any details that I wanted it to have. And then going from there, stepping things up with like my detailed stuff like method and the series builder, all of those things. All right, so let's work on creating a plugin. So I'm going to go to the plugins, explore, and we are going to create a plugin. All right, so of course you want your name, description, there's published. So this is where everybody can see it. If you only want it for you, you don't want anybody else to access it, you can keep it unlisted. Or some categories here. Now I have noticed there's an other here, which a lot of mine are actually classified as. But if you look over here, other is not in this list. So I need to talk to them about that and get that over there. And this is where you would be able to say if you wanted to use any story Bible information and our instructions here. So let's walk through this. Let's decide. I have a couple of prompts here that we could use. So this is where we could start off delving into our story premise, which I like this idea. So you know what? I'll do this. I need to copy my other one first. Sorry about that. I'm going to take this story that it gave us, the story idea, the one that I said I liked. There we go. So I'm going to copy that. And again, plugins don't work in the box stuff. It does pull from the boxes. I just want to copy in both places in case I need to highlight it or anything. So I know I have this I'm going to use for testing out this plugin. Let me drop it right here. So I won't be able to go back into my story Bible to grab it. And I want to use this one for testing it out. I'm going to drop my instructions in real quick. That way I know that's pasted in and I can start on everything else. So this, I'm just going to say premise builder. This isn't even anything fancy. And I will start giving it a description because that is required. And then after I create it, I revise my description to let it know what boxes it all uses and any other details. Okay, let's just do that's 
So we have our title, description, go ahead and leave it published. I'm looking through the house. Write a story premise that covers the following details. I'm going to let it know there could be more than one, especially with this story. And I would want it to read my brain dump and genre. And that should be good enough. But you know what? Just in case anybody has their characters done, and this is what I'm thinking about whenever I make my plugins. I'm thinking about the end user. What might they have that they want included? So they might already have their characters or some of their characters. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there. Again, if people actually don't want to use it, and this is why I list out what my plugin uses in the description. So people know I don't want it to use my characters, but if they already have characters in there, they know to go to a blank project to use it. So this one will look at brain dump, genre, and characters. And additional variables here is like a preset story. So this is where you can actually change everything. So I'm going to copy our premise that we had here. And we will make it epic fantasy, sword and sorcery. And I'm just going to delete all of these. All right, I'll run my test here. All right, so our story premise, protagonist, Arlen's Guild Elven Warrior. Burden with the responsibility of reuniting splintered factions and the core conflict and the stakes. So in this story, we know that there was actually more than one protagonist or could be. I'm envisioning this, especially since it's an epic fantasy, as having the group. And I really wanted to focus on that. So this does work, but it could be better. So that's why we run the test and see what needs to be improved. So I'm going to grab this. What's my advanced here? So all of my steady state instructions, I put those in the system box. That's the way I've always prompted. That's how I learned to do everything. So it's something I really stick with. That's why you see me cut it out of the user box and put it up here in the system. I know this isn't going to change. To me, whenever I'm prompting with AI, anything in the user box is stuff that could change. I am going to... Modify this slightly. Please write a story premise that covers the following key details. And I also want it to say, protagonist can be more than one character. And I'll give it an example, because the AI works best with examples. In an epic fantasy, there can be a group of protagonists. Now we know while we're writing this as the writers that we generally have one protagonist, the main character. But again, I want those details about those others. So there can be a group of protagonists working together to accomplish the story goal. So let's see if this modification right here helps get it more in line with what I'm wanting. I'm going to pick from the models. And this one is giving us short output. We're not asking for a lot. So I can keep it small with 3.5 turbo if I want, or one of the other models. I'm just going to go ahead and select that. I like to use the GPT models. Excuse me, I'm getting the hiccups. So I like to use the GPT models. Now my NSFW one actually used Goliath because it gave the best results for that particular one. But typically in all of mine, it's 3.5 turbo 16K or one of the GPT-4 models. So for temperature, eight, get rid of this. And if you've bought my chat GPT and playground prompting book, you know how to understand all of these and how to manipulate these and change them up according to the focus of your prompt. So this is brainstorming still. It could actually fit with more like the character development, but I want some ideas. So we're going to keep it at the brainstorming level. Maximum output. Again, this is fine. So I'm going to keep it at 1500. It actually really doesn't even need that much, but just in case. I'll show you these things that I don't usually change. Maximum words for preceding text. So if for whatever reason you need to look back at information, you can change that here. If you want to look back at more or less for my highlighted stuff. This says how many words can be highlighted by the user. So it's not counting all of the input. 
It just only say, okay, they can only highlight this many words, change that up if you need to. And then again, our maximum output is, what do you think will be that limit for it to encompass everything? And I like to pad that a little bit, as you can see. So let's run our test again with these change. There we go. That's better. Chattered Rayon, story premise, protagonist. Right. I like this. So we got the elven archer, dwarf, and a human mage. The antagonist, the core conflict, and the stakes. So this is good. Let's read through this real quick. Main conflict revolves around uniting the divided races. I like that. Okay, this is good. I'm happy with this. Now let's say I wasn't happy with the output. How can we fix it? If I'm stuck, I don't know what to do. We'll do an example here. I'm just going to copy this real quick. So this is what I would do if I didn't like it and didn't know how else to change my prompting. We are going to use our friend ChatGPT. But I copied right here. And then for my prompt, what I would do is say, tell it what I used. Let me just get everything separated right here. All right, so I have my prompt that I used and I had the output. So now that that's all copied in one place, this is probably going to confuse y'all. I'm sorry. But I'm just going to take that out right now because first I want to let chat know what I'm doing. I'm going to say, I need help refining a prompt for AI. I will give you the original prompt and the output. This is where I would tell it what's wrong. I would say in the output, this is happening. It's not giving me these details that I asked for, or maybe it's duplicating. Whatever is wrong, I would let it know what is happening right here. And then I'll ask, please help me fix that. In this instance, since I like the output, I'm going to change this up. I'm going to say, please read the prompt and see, but please read the prompt and output and suggest any changes we can make to have a stronger result. Stronger, let's see more detailed result. Copy all that stuff back in there. Okay, I need help refining a prompt for AI. I will give you the original prompt and the output. Please read the prompt and output and suggest any changes we can make to have a stronger, more detailed result. We can change this up to be whatever problem you're having with your prompt or output and ask it for help with that. All right, of course, starts off with giving us compliments. He likes to make us feel good. I will like that. Add depth by giving them personal stakes or challenges. I really like that. Now this one, my villain creator actually does this, but I can make it a one-stop shop sort of with this prompt so people wouldn't need to maybe go into the villain creator or I could ask it this information and then the villain creator could expand on that as well if people wanted to. So I'm, this is a maybe right here. Conflicts, world building. Yeah, I'm not really worried about the title. That's something we could easily work on later. But I like the rest of it. And this could also give you ideas. Maybe, you know, if you see me going through thinking about each one, maybe I want to do a couple of these and then I decide, oh, this would make a really good plugin all by itself. And you could go and do that. You could ask ChatGPT, hey, I like the idea of number two, but I would like to make that one its own prompt. And just to clarify, I could give it, um, I'm trying to think of how to word it. Let's give me a prompt that I can use with AI or the antagonist motivation. And it'll do that for me. So I could take this back into Sudorite and make a plugin from that. I'm liking these, I might have to actually look at my villain creator plugin and see if I can modify it with this. 
you see how we're kind of starting to go down the rabbit hole and come up with all of these ideas. All right, so let's go back to the original though. I like this character depth. Okay, sure. let me make sure my prompt I'm fixing to use. Okay, let's put this prompt aside for now and focus on the original. Just to let it know, okay, I've seen this, I've read it, but I don't want to focus on that right now. And it's given us some more stuff we could actually use. I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm just going to let it finish. So I know while that's working, I'm going to come back and look. I know for sure I want the character. I think I'm going to go ahead and include this anyways. I like this idea. World building really needs to be its own prompt. However, I could also get started with this one. No. I would want world building to be its own so I can make it comprehensive. Okay. So, modify my original prompt. I'm just going to copy it just so. I always like to say I don't want to give the AI the chance to be confused. So, I'm going to go ahead and copy the original and tell it rewrite the prompt as needed to include the following. I want these and the sticks. I had intended for this video to be pretty short and sweet. So if anybody is still watching, thank you for watching. Okay, so revised story premise from Please craft a detailed story premise. Okay. So it actually did what I wanted. Or it gave me the results, but I need just the prompt so I can use it anywhere. So I just need to tell it. This is great. And exactly what I need. For the output. However, I need a generalized prompt that I can use for other stories to achieve results similar to this output above. There we go. I like it. So instead of our, we went from our basic, you know, just asking for this, leaving it very vague and brief. And now we're going to be asking the AI to actually look at these things. And I actually, I like to read this to see if it's something I can use in my prompting. And I think I actually can. So let me take all of this. And for right now, I'm going to put it underneath just in case I need some of this. So we have our protagonist. I need to fix this formatting real quick. We have protagonist. We have all of this, so I don't need it now. I'm just going to replace each one right here. Actually, don't need to do that. I think it'll be okay if we do it this way. Yeah, I'm going to take out those numbers real quick. And now you are seeing my process. I know y'all would rather a smooth video where people are doing this, no issues arise, they already have everything planned out. However, this is me real time working through my actual thought process of going through all this. Please write a story premise that covers the following details. I have everything in order with the new prompting. So now I'm going to look at this real quick. I want to keep our reminder in here. Consider these elements in any story context, whether it's fantasy. Okay, I like that. I am going to take this portion. So please write a story premise. And I'm going to put that right here. Ensure a well-rounded and compelling story premise. Here we go. Please wait. write a well-rounded and compelling story premise focusing on character depth, motivation, and the emotional weight of the conflict. I like that. Mm -hmm. Use the following format and key details. There we go. So I like this. Run the test again. Okay. Now, I am not going to do it in this video, but one thing I might would do is go back to chat GPT, copy this output and tell it that I didn't like the personal stakes being separate right here. I wanted it attached to each one. That's just a format thing, just preference when I'm looking at yeah. it. It's no big deal though. So I like this. All video, I'm going to modify it, I think. I'm going to think on whether or not I really want to change that format to where it's all in one person at a time. So for now, I'm going to keep it unlisted 
but I will add it to this document link right here that will be in the description and get that done so y'all can have it. One thing I want y'all to note is after you've selected the store Bible information, so if I go back to this basic tab, it will tell me I've already made some changes in the advanced editor. I can't come back and do things right here. So I can no longer change whether it's pulling in story Bible boxes. What you can do, let me switch this to unlisted real quick. What you can do though, the obvious way first, if I decide I don't want it to use the characters, I can just delete this information. Let's say I decide I want it to look at my synopsis or style box. So I can copy this bracket right here. And it doesn't matter where you put it. I'm just doing it in the order that I envision things. All of this story should be, and then I will paste that. So that's how you can go in and add some other elements if you decide you want that in here. All right, so that is it. I've shown you how I use some of my plugins. Again, if you have any questions on any of them, reach out to me. I've shown you how to create some. Was it a nice, concise view of it? I can actually do another video later. So I have a couple more that I would like to do. But again, y'all saw me actual real time go through my thought process of what I decided to like, what I decided I liked, didn't like, ways to improve things. And I will do that again, I'm sure, the next video, but it'll be still be shorter. So I've clicked unlisted have my name, description, which are required. So I am just going to save this for now. So publish the plugin. And then I can go back in and make my changes as needed for that format to come out the way I want. All right. Well, hopefully this was helpful to y'all. And thank you for watching. Thank you to all of the subscribers. Y'all really jumped the channel up pretty quick. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Also, thank you for the support in my chat GPT and Playground and Pseudorite books. Y'all have done a great job. The Pseudorite book, y'all put number one in a couple of categories. Y'all actually had the chat GPT and Playground book at number one before it was even live. I think like the first or second day it was available for pre-order. Y'all jumped it up to number one. So thank you emphatically for that. And I will see y'all next time. Bye, everyone.